what is all the buzz surrounding artificial intelligence? So unless you've been living under rock for the last year, you must have heard of terms like ChatGPT, Generative AI, DALI, OpenAI. Everyone's been talking about Generative AI and it's captured everyone's imagination since ChatGPT first debuted for public use in November 2022. So what exactly is GPT or Generative Pre-trained Transformer? A transformer is essentially a category of deep learning or neural network artificial intelligent models that has a certain architecture. The most distinctive part about this architecture is what we call the self-attention mechanism. The idea behind the self-attention mechanism comes from a 2017 Google paper, which is entitled, All You Need Is Attention. In fact, here at Lion Global, we do have um, a transformer-based model that's using pretty much the same transformer architecture as ChatGPT. But unlike ChatGPT, which is trained for large languages, here we're specifically training it for large sets of financial data and tuning it for financial purposes. And this is just one of the many artificial intelligent models that we have in our toolkit. Once you have this transformer architecture in place, you'll recall that in previous episodes about AI, we explained that AI of all forms essentially learns by recognizing patterns for millions of data points. So transformer AI models also do the same thing. They're basically very, very good pattern recognition machine. So that's a transformer part of it. So now the generative part of GPT, which is that after having learned these patterns and it's a pre-trained framework, you can then use this pre-trained framework model to create new things. So in our case, after we've trained it on tons of financial data, we use it to try and make predictions about the financial market. In the case of ChatGPT, people will be using it to make text-like responses to your text prompt. People also use it for art. So you might have heard of Hugging Face or Dali, where people would be asking for, say, the Mona Lisa, but in the style of Vincent van Gogh. So it would have learned what van Gogh does, what kind of art it does, what it looks like, and then try and create the Mona Lisa, but in that style with the little swirlies. People are also using it for music. So OpenAI has a program called Jukebox, and there you can request for music, um, a new song, but in the style of Elvis Presley, or maybe even a Chinese song, but in the style of Elvis Presley. So you can mix and match, and it's actually quite interesting. How quickly is the finance industry adopting artificial intelligence? Fortunately, in the broader finance industry, its adoption rate is still relatively slow. In 2019, there was a CFA Institute survey which found that only 10% of portfolio managers use artificial intelligence or machine learning techniques, and less than 25% of analysts use some form of big data or artificial intelligence in their day-to-day -day work. A follow-up survey in 2020 came to pretty much the same conclusion. The level of adoption in the fund management industry is still relatively low. Fortunately for Lion Global Investors, we are one of the earlier adopters within the fund management industry, and we actually started our AI journey several years ago. Currently, we already run an ensemble, which is a combination of several machine learning based equity stock picking models, fixed income model, and a macro asset allocation model. We also use various large language models, which is what your chat GPT is, to analyze filings, transcripts, and news for sentiments data. We combine both proprietary and third-party source data as then inputs to our core selection and allocation AI models. How has Lion Global Investors been using artificial intelligence? Now, surveys find that when most people think about AI, they tend to think about the cost-saving aspect, which leads to a lot of scaremongering headlines where people talk about AI is going to replace humans, they're going to take over human jobs. When I spoke at the ACI World Congress recently, I did an audience poll. And sure enough, the top use case that people cited, even amongst finance professionals, was actually for cost reduction. Almost no one chose one of our main purpose, which is to develop new products and open new markets. In terms of cost savings and productivity improvements, of course, we can and do use that. In some ways, we are improving our efficiency and productivity when we use AI models like large language models to analyze and process large chunks of text that historically you'd have had to use human analysts to analyze. And if you're using Microsoft or GitHub Copilot, it helps you improve the speed at which you're analyzing information. Then the other use case that we use AI for is to improve a performance or capture alpha. This comes about and can be done because AI tends to process more information than human analysts can. The third use case and one that Line Global is particularly excited about is that AI can allow us to enter new geographies and create new products. So long as we can buy the data sets, 
that cover these geographies or asset classes, we should be able to do it right here from Singapore. So for example, we can use it to manage global equities, bonds, other asset classes, and helps us break down geographical borders and time zones. At Lion Global, our priority is actually on the letter to use case bubble. How do you see Asia's adoption and trajectory for artificial intelligence compared to Europe and the US? The outlook in Asia is actually pretty varied. On the one hand, we have research showing that China and India have the most respondents who claim to have adopted AI, and also that China is comparable to the US in terms of the number of patent filings on AI, the number of academic papers written about AI. However, the papers that have been written by China, as well as the patent filings by China, tend to have fewer citations as compared to the ones written in the US. Likewise, China and India also has to deal with the issues around geopolitics. So, you must know that the US has banned NVIDIA's H100 GPU chips, which is the cutting-edge technology that is used to power ChatGPT and other transformer-type technologies. So, it's a big question mark over whether China and the China tech companies like Huawei, Tencent, Alibaba can overcome this ban. Can they use lesser-powered GPUs to still do the same level of training? And then what about the actual chips itself? If TSMC, which is the offshore Taiwanese foundry, can't ship to China, can the onshore Chinese foundries like SMIC continue to produce cutting edge like sub 4 nanometer chips when you have a ban on ASML's lithography equipment? These are all questions that we have to answer and are unanswered. We are fortunate that here in Singapore, we don't have to grapple with all these geopolitics. We have a very conducive environment. We have a government that's very supportive of AI adoption amongst the populace. And we don't have to deal with these bans. We have good world-class educational institutes that have AI talent that we can draw upon for the work that we do, as well as easy access to open source AI models that we can adopt and adapt for our purposes. Thank you.